up to now we have discussed uh, individual waves of depolarization and repolarization uh, this is a simplified model just to explain to you the rules of the ecg now using this information let's uh, go to the basics of vectorial analysis what are vectors in the ecg from the uh, from uh, the clinical medicine point of view okay and from now uh, this point onwards we'll be discussing that there are no individual depolarization or repolarization waves uh, basically these waves are released in batches okay so when the sa node uh, discharges like this it spreads uh, depolarization waves in uh, uh, in several directions simultaneously okay uh, now you will uh, hopefully understand the art of summing things together and making averages of vectors uh, we'll discuss how to summate these individual depolarizations what are they called first the language you will understand the language the lingo uh, these individual depolarizations and when you sum it up what, what is the term for that uh, we need to derive uh, a mean electrical axis that's the uh, the the entire focus of the entire of the next two to three slides So in this slide, we will study how the P wave is formed, the P wave of the ECG. Okay. Now, as I was mentioning, these individual waves of depolarizations, uh, if we are talking about uh, the uh, atrium, atrium, this is the SA node, and when it when it triggers, uh, when it depolarizes, it sends away, it sends out uh, uh, several individual depolarization waves now called from now on called electrical vectors so this is the language okay the, this negative and positive terminal is of a lead okay is is of a ecg lead and if you go through this uh, negative towards positive you can you can draw an imaginary line let me draw a line from the positive and negative terminal so this is the line approximately now when the SA node discharges, as you can see, it has it 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 sends off electrical vectors in all directions, right? In all directions. Summing it up, as I mentioned, summing these individual small or large or medium-sized vectors together gives us mean electrical vector. Okay. Okay. So this this red thing here this one this is the mean electrical vector for the atrium this is what forms um, uh, the p wave as we'll discuss in a bit okay but let's just complete this point and uh, the direction direction is very important uh, hence i do the line the direction of the mev determines its polarity very important point and its magnitude okay here this is an important point from comparing it along the line of the ecg lead where does your mev lies where does the m I mean uh, electrical vector lies if it lies exactly on top of the line it's uh, its polarity obviously will be positive if it's directing it, if its direction is towards the positive if it's away from the positive it will be negative this is again uh, referring to the ecg rules what about the magnitude the magnitude is uh, uh, let's think of uh, it as practical terms atria are less muscular than ventricles so everything that happens electrically or even mechanically uh, is uh, on uh, towards the lesser side in atria when we compare it to the ventricle okay so the uh, direction of the mev if it falls on the line which goes the imaginary line which goes uh, towards the from negative to positive the lead the ecg lead if it falls upon that then it's uh, uh, it's 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 a big wave as big as it gets uh, uh keeping in view the size of the atrial muscle so in this case as you can see it's not lying on top of this green line uh, of the ecg lead it's it's a bit away it's not a lot away but it's 
it is still a, a, a bit away from this line. So the wave now that it will form, which will, it will be upwards because it's facing the positive terminal, it will be upward and it will have a sizable deflection based on the atrial muscle thickness that it's depolarizing. Okay, welcome the P wave. Okay, so P wave is formed as atrial depolarization because of the MEV that it produces, which is the sum of uh, sum, summing up of the individual electrical vectors that the SA node generates. And the direction is positive, hence it's a positive wave, and the magnitude is, is average or above average, depending on because based on atrial muscle size. Okay. If we have understood that, let's move on. And let me introduce you to this bit here. What are this diagram here? Okay. So very obviously now, I hope this slots in nicely with you. If this were, let me draw my green line. If this is the line, okay, this is the same line, by the way, which I drew over here. Okay, this is that same line. Okay, if this were the line, any wave which falls on the line will give the biggest deflection. Obvious point, I, I assume now. I hope so. If it's away from the positive electrode, it will be, uh, uh, and it falls on the line, it will be a negative wave. Oops. It will be a negative wave and its magnitude will be maximum. If the wave, whichever wave you're discussing, if, if it falls in this qu quadrant here, then it will assume the shape of a positive wave and its magnitude will depend on its distance from the positive uh, uh, terminal. If, however, if it's in this quadrant, then it will be a negative uh, polarity wave. And again, its magnitude will depend on how away it is from the positive electrode and or how close it is to the negative terminal. Okay. And, and so is the case here, yellow is uh, negatives and reds are positives. Okay, I hope you 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 will stay with this. Uh, if there are questions, just uh, uh, comment away in the section and, and we'll see. The next up is formation of QRS complex. Uh, uh, we are now dealing with uh, the ventricle. Please make sure, pause this video here. Please make sure uh, that you understand whatever happened in this diagram here. We'll now talk about the formation of QRS complex. Uh, and what is this thing we introduced uh, initially as the mean uh, electrical axis, okay? Let me just get some basic uh, things out of the way. We are again mentioning MEVs, okay? Uh, these MEVs we have already discussed, uh, mean electrical vectors, but now we are talking about uh, the ventricle. This don't be confused by a lot of these uh, arrows. You'll be you'll be uh, knowing all of this in in say uh, in the following two three minutes, inshallah. Uh, just concentrate on the ventricle muscle itself, and then see one to four uh, MEVs. So this is one number one MEV, two, three, and four. For now, just ignore this big red arrow. Okay. Now I want you to concentrate on these four MEVs, one, two, four, okay? These are the MEVs which generate the QRS complex, okay? And we will now uh, describe how the QRS complex is made in the first part of this uh, slide uh, presentation explanation. And the second part we'll discuss what is this thing called mean arterial axis, okay? So firstly, formation of QRS. Now, as you know, when the cardiac impulse travels, or gener gets generated from the SA node, travels through the atrial, uh, atrial muscle, then arrives at the AV node. In AV node, it gets delayed, and that you have discussed, uh, I've studied uh, priorly when you were discussing cardiac impulse. When it's delayed, and now it, 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 uh, arrives at the end of the AV node and it's about to 
enter into the Perkanji fiber system, which innovate uh, the big ventricles throughout, that is where we pick up proceedings. Right here, right where my marker here is, this point. This is that point where the cardiac impulse is, is just coming out of the AV node and it's hitting the Perkanji fibers and ensuing ventricular muscle. So this point, the first point is interventricular septum topmost area, literally where this, this black dot is, okay? This is where it comes out and immediately it depolarizes the topmost part of the interventricular septum. This depolarization or these electrical vectors sum up to make this, this particular MEV. Label it with yellow. This one. This is that MEV that is formed, uh, uh, what I just described. Okay. It is, now let's see uh, the position of it. Let me bring my greens. Okay. Remember the line? This line. Okay. Uh, this is that same line that I drew over here. Okay. Over here. So this is that line. Which part is uh, uh, this uh, MEV1 is lying? Which part of this, this whole thing? Imagine, uh, just remember to keep referring to this, this, uh, this uh, 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 scheme of axis, uh, whatever you want to call it, that I've already discussed in detail in the previous slide. Okay. What, it, what I've done is, uh, just look at my hand now. Uh, this particular this particular diagram, we've taken this diagram and we have rotated it and applied it on the heart over here. I'll do this again. We have taken this diagram, okay, like this and applied it here, but we have applied it in a way that it fits or it, it it's positioned over the ventricle. So we had to angulate it to, to uh, apply on the ventricles. So now when you see that if I were to make, I'm now adjusting this diagram, okay? Something like this, right? What we have effectively made are four quadrants. Four quadrants as I already mentioned. This quadrant, okay? This is this quadrant here, this quadrant, this is that quadrant, this quadrant, this is that quadrant, and then this quadrant, which is right here, and nothing is happening when you're been talking about the ventricle normal uh, uh, cardiac impulse. Uh, no, no MEV is directed towards this part uh, of the axes. Uh, we are not saying that this part is not depolarized. I'm just talking about the electrical activity and the mean uh, vectors, electrical vectors, vectors that uh, get formed. Okay, so if you are clear about the quadrants that I that I've mentioned, now all I need to do is place the MEVs from one to four in these quadrants. So uh, the MEV one lies in this particular quadrant, which is here, right here. So what kind of wave would it produce? Very simple. It will produce something like this. So it will be a downward deflection. And this is exactly what happens by MEV1. It produces your Q wave. All right, I hope this is clear. Okay, let's move on to the other uh, MEVs, two and three. Now, two is, uh, is closest to the positive electrode. MEV2, it, it, it lies in this quadrant, this quadrant, which is basically this in this diagram, okay? So it is, uh, I've already described, this is closest uh, to the positive recording electrode, and hence its uh, magnitude will be the, the largest, okay? Same goes for three. Three also, it lies in this quadrant, all, although it is away from the positive electrode. However, it is still in this positive 
environment all right so hence it also will produce a positive deflection now what actually happens let me describe two and three are are, are also interesting so when the impulse now comes uh, down the septum and is now uh, directing towards the apex of the heart is when mev2 is formed okay uh, you are now talking about where the heart is the thickest it's the biggest right uh, part of the ventricle um, and this is what then makes qr wave this is the r wave which is formed by mev2 let's talk about mev3 mev3 is still uh, a positive wave although it's lesser than uh, the mev2 so it will keep the heart nice and cozy in the positive uh, the ecg in the positive area uh, as as you can see that it's still upwardly present so this bit here it's still positive okay now from the cardiac impulse side what is happening now from the apex the mev has is is now rotating remember this is my left okay side and uh, this is the left side okay so now the the impulse is now rotating towards the left arm this is my left arm okay left arm and the uh, anterior chest wall left arm and anterior chest wall it started from interventricular uh, inter septum then rotated down to the apex now it has rotated towards the left arm and the anterior chest wall that produces this mev3 which is right here it it, it keeps the deflection towards uh, the positive direction but decreases the magnitude a bit a bit because it is in any way it's away from the positive terminal okay nothing beats mev2 right okay this is mev4 Again, you can uh, imagine clearly that it is lying in this particular quadrant. Obviously, what it's going to do is make a negative deflection, okay? Uh, uh, and this is indeed what it does. It produces the S component of the QRS complex. And you see that this is that bit here, which brings the whole thing down. And voila, you have the QRS complex. And now we are left with defining what mean electrical axis is. So very simply, what if we were to add this up, all these MEVs, and look at it as a time function, okay? So let me say it this way. In time, if you average it in time, the least contributing MEVs would be one in four. Obviously, look at the magnitude, okay, uh, and the polarity, right? And the most contributor would be two and three. And amongst these, it would be more towards two. So when you make a axis, which is all the mean electrical activity summed up in time, that is called an axis. And this is what this big uh, arrow is it's the axis of the ventricle ventricles mean electrical axis of the of the ventricles okay it's it's all written here it is normally plus 59 degrees uh, uh, so if uh, this is uh, uh, zero uh, this is 90 somewhere here is it's close to 60 this is where it lies uh, this uh, system it's called uh, axial reference system don't be scared uh, this dotted line that I, that they have made here uh, it's it, it refers to an axial system uh, and when we talk about ECG leads which is right after these uh, this uh, this segment of the explanation you'll understand what I'm talking about 